and announce the beginning of the call. It's um, Monday, June 19th, which is a national holiday in the United States, marking the um, emancipation of enslaved people during the uh, what they call the Civil War back in 1865. Became a national holiday just a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it seems particularly, um, I don't know, meaningful, I guess, uh, for me that we would be doing a nonviolent communication practice group on Juneteenth, which is what the name of the holiday is, because it's about liberation. And I long for a world where everyone is free. And so we we focus on the inner game of liberation here. For some of you, though, it's already Tuesday, June the 20th, because uh, about half the people that come to this call typically come from Asia. So uh, we have lots of different time zones here. For some people, it's just getting up and getting the day started, and others are are stretching beyond their normal bedtime in order to come and play with us. Mm -hmm. So whichever boat you're in, we're really glad that you're here. And I'm feeling um, encouraged and um, enlivened at the moment and curious about what we'll do today. And how about you? I'm happy to be here. I just love to see your faces and just uh, feel that sense of community as I look around this circle. So thank you for coming. It's a gift. I'm happy. So what we do in the practice group is we practice the three different uh, modes of practice of nonviolent communication, which is uh, self-connection or self-compassion or self-empathy, something along those lines where we're really focusing on using the skills and consciousness of nonviolent communication just with ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we'll do that in just a moment um, uh, with a song. And before we do that, um, I'll be making uh, groups afterwards, so you'll be able to connect with each other and what comes up for you. And if you do not want to be in a breakout group, uh, there'll be groups of generally three, plus or minus a little. Um, if you don't want to be in a group, please put an equal sign in front of your name so that you will not be in a group. And that's the other way we practice. So first we start with the self-connection where we're just using NBC with ourselves. And then we transition into a a chance to practice the honesty and the empathy part of NBC, which is the speaking and the listening. And then we'll come back here together. Oh, it's always fun to see uh, new people arriving. Hi, Ron, haven't seen you in a while. And Leslie. Um, uh, Then we'll come back here to the main room and connect as a, a large group. There'll be a little bit of a lesson today. Um, about um, some one of the skills of nonviolent communication, and we'll get some practice right off the bat. And then there'll be another chance if things go according to plan to go back to small groups and connect with uh, with uh, whoever you were with before or with new people. You never know quite how that's going to work. So unless there's something else up for anybody, we'll go ahead and start our self connection. So I'm just checking to see if anybody. Has anything else you want to say or do before we do that? I see one hand up. It looks like Syl has her hand up. Yes. My mother's name, Syl. And we can't hear you yet, Syl. You're you'll still need, muted. You'll need to unmute yourself, which is a little button on usually on the lower left-hand side of your screen. It looks like a microphone and has a... There you go. There, you, you did, did it. it. Yay. I'd like... To, I'm requesting that uh, I be in a breakout group with my cousin Cinda, who's right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right there. So we'll put okay. Lucinda and Syl together. Okay. Okay, very I'll good. I'll do my best. All right. See the power of a request. You're much more likely to get what you want if you ask for it. Uh-huh. I learned that in NBC. There you go. That's right. <laughs> All right. So, um, she is right there. Mm-hmm. So let's just start with, uh, I, I invited Ron to sing a song for us, but before we do that, I want to invite you to just notice where you are. Look around the room that you're in, get oriented to the place, the here that you are.
And then having your eyes open or closed is completely up to you, but also orient to the now so that as best you can, you're present and alive for this song. And the invitation would be to open yourself to connect with your own feelings and needs as you listen to the song. I'll be doing the same thing as you. I haven't heard the song before, or maybe I have, but I don't know what the song is anyway. So I'm becoming present and open to outcome. Find out what, what it's gonna be like. And Ron, whenever you're ready. Thank you so much. This is my song as if Marshall Rosenberg, Mr. Rogers and Happy Ron got together and wrote a song. This is what I imagine it might sound like. Some people you want to talk to Every chance you can You walk into a room And they greet you with a grin You like who you are So much better when you're with them So thank you for being my friend the link to the song in the chat if you're interested thanks ron Thank you. so just notice what's alive in you after being with ron and his song what i mean by what's alive in you just first notice your body what do you notice in your body right now what sensations and emotions are you present to First, you notice those sensations and emotions, and sometimes it's helpful to name them for yourself, if they have a name. And open yourself to those feelings. Allow yourself to feel them. Human beings feel feelings. And then connect the feelings that you're noticing to your needs. And what that means is just to notice what's important to you right now. What are the feelings telling you are important to you in this moment? And 
And then find out if <clears throat> find out if there's any requests alive in you in the moment. Maybe a request of yourself as you realize that you're about to be whisked to a small group with a couple of other people. Maybe you'll know them, maybe you won't. So it's a real moment of uncertainty. And so you might notice the feelings coming alive in you about that. And again, connect the feelings to your needs. We're going to go to these small groups for about um, 12 minutes. That won't be enough time for some of you. It'll be too much time for some of you. <clears throat> we get that very consistent feedback. It's not enough for some and too much for others. And that's just the way it seems to be. And it's helpful if there are three people in your group to take three minutes each, maybe even have a timer to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak. That'll leave a little bit left over if need be for some. And people say, well, what are we supposed to talk about? And you talk about the life that's moving in you. You've heard a song and you heard a little self-connection about it. You're in a group. What's alive in you when you suddenly find yourself with these uh, other two people? So you might introduce yourself, say where you're from, how you're feeling, what you're needing, and if you have any requests. So we'll be back here in 12 minutes. If you're not in a group yet, um, you'll be put into one. If you find out that you're all alone in a group, don't worry about it. Just stay alone, and we'll find somebody to put in there with you. Sometimes that happens. Uh, just, just stay where you are, <clears throat> and uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a friend in there for you. Or we'll move you to another place. So yeah, right in this moment, everybody is assigned, and there's nobody left out that I see. Okay, so great. we're good to go. So here we go. See you back here in twelve minutes. Oh, by the way, there'll be a little timer on the upper right hand corner of your screen that'll count down. There'll be a point when it'll say breakout rooms ending. You can just. Um, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to push any buttons. You'll be very tempted to push a button, but you don't need to push a button. Just wait for an extra minute and you'll come back here all by yourself. Yeah, we intentionally leave an extra minute after that, the end of that timer, mm -hmm. so that whoever's speaking can complete whatever they're saying. Okay, here we go. Hey, welcome back. This is the, the moment uh, when we all reconvene as a group. And so I invite you to take just 30 seconds to reflect on what happened in your small group. Notice how you're feeling right now. Name it if it's helpful to name the feelings. Check, see if any needs of yours were fed by being in that small group. And give an open heart also to any remaining unmet needs. Like you might, might have been right in the middle of an expression when the group ended. So you may have a, a still hungry need for self-expression. And if anybody would like to share your experience right now, uh, you can raise your hand. And if you don't know how to raise your hand, um, there's a little button on the bottom of your screen that says reactions. It looks a little like a smiley face. And if you if you click that, it opens up a, a little menu. And there's a, one of the menu items is raise your hand. You can also, everyone fits on our screen today, so you can also try, you know, getting our attention. That works sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to track 49, 41 faces at the moment, so we're not always getting everybody. But we'd love to hear a few, <clears throat> a few voices. Find out how you are right now. Yeah, go ahead, Svetlana. Sp <clears throat> sorry, Svetlana. Svetlana. Yes, Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Yes, my name is Svetlana. Um, <laughs> You know, it was very warm meeting for me uh, to be in this small group uh, um, 
yes, uh, we didn't finish our conversation, <laughs> but um, we we have opportunity to express ourselves, our feelings, and talk about the need just a little bit. And uh, I really appreciate uh, this uh, meeting and uh, the conversation which we have with each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks Thank for sharing you. a little bit. Yeah. Glad you're here. <clears throat> Welcome. Nice to have a little peek into your experience too. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything you'd like to share with all of us? Is anybody waiting so that you can go last? Because if you are, <laughs> this might be a good time to go. <laughs> uh, he cracks me up a lot. Well, uh, I'm in, I'm enjoying, you know, when I first got into NBC, I was um, very socially um, needy, so to speak, and very fragile socially. And I'm, I'm enjoying more and more. I'm realizing that I, um, it always seemed like a big deal if I went somewhere socially and it was like a lot, a lot of big, something was at stake. You know, my, my self-esteem was at stake. And I'm realizing particularly the last six or six months or year that I realized you, you never know what's going to happen in a group like this and that, that that's okay and that's just part of the process it's no longer this big thing whether it goes one way or the other it just it goes how it goes so yeah I'm becoming more conscious of as i have a, a larger degree of social confidence and um plenty of social interaction now so i'm very grateful for that yeah thanks for sharing that gratitude Mm -hmm. I really catch um, um, a celebration of your growth over over your years of practice that have made it more fun for you to be in groups. Allison, our old buddy from uh, Albuquerque, Allison's been a victim, I mean a student <laughs> of ours uh, <clears throat> since about the year 2001, so um <clears throat> It's either a testament to her staying power or our inability to get across the basics of NBC to anybody. Maybe we'll hear from you more yeah. about it. <laughs> Go ahead, Allison. Well, yes, after all these years of my dumbing around with NBC, which I love, um, this a short little practice group. Um, I don't know if I should say people's names or Excuse me, Allison. For some reason, your voice is not coming in very clear. Maybe you can. Oh, let me move up here. Is yeah, that yeah. better? Oh, much better. Okay. Well, I was stunned. I was in the most miserable, um, hopeless, frustrated, I hate myself. How have I managed to ruin my life? All that repertoire is quite familiar to me. Um, I know the territory. And I was in the trenches. And I wasn't going to even do a group, but I couldn't get my um, dexterity enough to put the equal thing before my name. So, and I was, you know, it's just kind of like, it's NBC, you know, it's, my, it's a lovely thing. Wow. I, was stunned at winning. And I didn't even have to say much about it. Just was saying basically what I just now said. And my partner in this, she so naturally just said back what she was going to say. It was so natural, so warm, mm -hmm. so caring. So, and I, it was like being a two-year-old who just like broke their favorite toy and they just had someone come up and give me yeah. uh, and, and she did all that for me. And I was shocked. My grumpy, horrible, where's the pit that I should dive into and never come back was gone. It just evaporates. It's like, oh, how much fun. And someone was nice to me. And I saw in her that my terrors, that she was not, she had this cup of empathy, and that's where it all was going. Uh -huh. and I was so concerned that I was, I shouldn't say any of this 
duty that was on me might get on someone else if I said. And I, all these years of MDC, I never saw how some how that smoothness and wow. empathy evaporated. It just, wow, it held it. And neither one of us got damaged. That's great, Allison. What, I, what I'm catching, for some reason, you're still hard to hear, but what I caught was, <clears throat> what I caught was, your amazement at the power of empathy to support you in connecting to yourself and getting some more choice about how you show up. And that she was protected by it. She uh -huh. was protected because I was raised with, oh, you're having a bad mood. Don't spread that around us. Uh -huh. She was protected uh -huh. by her capacity for empathy. Yes, that's a great and point. I, and I saw that she was protected. And that lifted so much shame and horror and terror away from me. Nice. Yeah. It was amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Catching your amazement. I, I, yeah. I love your sharing. Thank you. And I, I see who you were with, and I appreciate your partner for being with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. OK, so <clears throat> that seems to clear the board. Uh, there'll be other chances to share in the large group as we go. I'm going to share my screen with you and uh, do a, uh, some practice, a little bit of a lesson and some practice with you. And so today's class is called The Heart and Science of Requesting Connection, which uh, <clears throat> we'll see how much, uh, how much heart and science we can weave in here today. Mostly it's you practicing. So when Jory and I are listening to your debriefs, we'll try to weave in some of the MVC um, uh, um, strategies that you're likely to be using, highlight them and, and talk a little bit about why NBC and what we know about NBC, the science of it can really support people in having more of a sense of connection and helping their nervous systems to respond in a way. This has been part of a series where we've been filling in the blanks on uh, on some skills that we that we've been using, and we started with a a, a few weeks ago with a, a lesson on what we call the zero step. And I always just start with this because it's where, it's where for me it's the most important part of my NBC practice is is getting clear on what my intention is and in using NBC in the first place, uh, or any other strategy that I'm using, whether it's NBC or uh, a, a tool in the garden. I want to know what the intention of the tool is, what my intention is, and so forth. And get really clear on that as a as a as an initial uh, piece of of whatever it is that I'm doing. Then bringing attention to the present moment. Everything about nonviolent communication, in my experience, is designed to support me in bringing myself to here and now. And when I do that, when I'm clear on my intention and I'm clear on my attention, there's a natural um, openness to outcome, more um, more comfort with the uncertainty that uh, we, that like uh, someone was speaking about a few minutes ago. To get there, we've been uh, kind of dancing through some of these skills with practice. We started with some self-empathy and you'll, you'll see some words here that you probably heard me say three times already today, noticing, naming, and allowing. That's like the three words that describe uh, self-empathy for me. So you just notice what your own experience is in the moment. It can be helpful to name it. There's good neuroscience about that. And that helps us to allow ourselves to feel whatever we feel and then be able to be empowered to, to make some choices. And then we added two more skills, empathy and gratitude, to see how they can support us in, um, in creating more connection with people and um, give us a chance to to deepen into the three main strategies that we've already mentioned about nonviolent communication, self-connection, empathy, and honesty. And we'll get a chance to practice all three of those today. So um, let's just practice. It's so much easier to practice if I don't fill your head with data first, because then you'll try to do what I tell you to do. I'd much rather you trust your own experience and see what you already know. Yeah, see what comes up for you, too, in your own individual way. So it's helpful to write the answers down, if that, uh, because then you'll have a record of the exercise, and you'll be able to go back to it and do it again if you find it useful. So <clears throat> we're going to weave in some of these other skills here, uh, and 
starting with, think of something wonderful that someone has done recently. Something that you sensed was a contribution to life. It could have been uh, directed towards you, but I'm not, that's not part of the observation in this case. It's just noticing that somebody did something, somebody that you know did something recently that you evaluate as wonderful. Describe what they did. This gives us practice doing the observation step of nonviolent communication. It's just simply a description of who did what in this case. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be huge. Just something that really made your life more wonderful. That you Sometimes it's helpful when the trainer primes the pump by giving an observation from themselves. So today, um, Happy Ron made life wonderful because he offered to sing a song for us. And then he sang it at our practice group. And then connect to the need, your need. At least it seems that way at first, that you have a need that was fed by their gift. So in my case, for example, when uh, Happy Ron played his song for our practice group, it contributed to a need for beauty, harmony, Purpose, community. So now you think about your observation. What needs of yours were fed? And the need word, uh, the need word may not be on this. This is not the all of them and the the right words. But if something comes up for you that is distant from this, just ask yourself again, yeah, and I had that. If I had that, then what? To make sure you get to something universal. So be quiet while you hang out with this chart for a minute or so. Sometimes it's delicious to share these needs in the chat. It might um, help other people to, as they hear your needs, it may stimulate them to get words to describe their needs. So if you would like to do that, feel free to add it to the chat. Richard, you had a something up. Go ahead. Yeah, I noticed um, 
I wanted uh, justice to be on um, my um, needs list, uh, but they told me that's not, justice isn't um, actually a human need because it there's something about right or wrong involved in that. Well, that's that, that, that I know some people probably believe that. And uh, it's on my needs list. I don't know if you noticed it because there, there's different strategies for justice. I think what people are, when they see the word justice, they're often uh, relating uh, their experience of justice to a domination system, a, a, a system that judges people on, on whether their behavior was right or wrong, good or bad, and whether or not they deserve to be punished. That's called retributive justice. And uh, that's a feature of, uh, of the justice system in the country where I am currently living. And But there's another kind of justice that's on the rise called restorative justice. And that's where nonviolent communication comes in. So it's certainly possible uh, in a restorative justice system to have a need for justice and, and notice that as we address the underlying needs that it can contribute to well-being. And so that, that's, that's what's alive in me with the, with, when I use, keep the word justice on my needs list is I'm trying to transcend that old belief that justice is just about right and wrong and good and bad. Does that help? And just I'd like to add a piece that you know it's a need if you keep drilling in. And if I had that, what would be the deeper meaning of that? And keep going till you get to that place. Your heart gets it when you get to the need level. It's just like, oh, yeah. So just follow the words. And if I had that, then what, what would be the deeper meaning of that? And see where that takes you. Where it'll take you to eventually is to a place without words. Because we're just using words to try to describe this energy of the universe. Marshall called it beloved divine energy. It's just the, it's actually the energy that makes everything happen. And uh, we just, we, in order for us to connect about it, sometimes it's helpful to have words like justice or support or belonging or connection or interdependence or some of these other words that mm -hmm. uh, we've been connecting with. I hope that's helpful, Richard. Is there yeah, any? But in this particular case, you are actually looking for a word. Yeah, that was- And the... so you that word will come and you will feel it in your body beyond just the sound of the letters. How's that for you, Richard? Yeah, uh, landed, uh, I got it. I so appreciate the clarity and- um, I, I wanted justice to be on my needs list, and they told me no. <laughs> well, you get to have your own needs list. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. I hereby, I'm I hereby uh, empower you and everybody here to have your own needs list, even if nobody, even if you're the only one on the planet that believes that such and such is a need. If it's a need for you, then I trust it. I want you to trust yourself and never trust um, uh anyone else uh, yeah. unless you're making a reference to your own experience as well and words are just pointers you want to find the words that point to the depth of your shared humanity so let's get back to the exercise let's see here let me find my exercise here it is okay i'm going to make it smaller again okay so next step Let's let's re reconnect for, first. Re remember this observation. Reconnect with the memory. Bring it back alive for yourself. It's a gratitude. So you're, this is an opportunity to practice savoring. You can relive this experience over and over and over again. And then connect to the need or needs of yours that were fed by this gift. And then as you do that, notice how you feel right now. I'm predicting that it'll be somewhere in the realm of gratitude, appreciation, hope, inspiration, something that traditionally would be called a positive emotion. 
I like to call them life affirming emotions. Mm -hmm. Just notice that feeling and let yourself really feel it. Then imagine that you have an opportunity to share your gratitude with the other person. How, how do you feel now? There's a chance for you to, to connect, to share your appreciation, your gratitude with another person. How do you feel? To find out the answer to this question, you need to go to your body. Notice what sensations and emotions you become present to when you think about sharing your gratitude. Notice it first. Notice the feelings. Name them. Savor them. Allow them. And what are those feelings telling you are about the needs that are alive in you now? Like when I think about sharing my gratitude more directly with Happy Ron, um, I feel curious. I mean, I've already done it indirectly. He's here, sitting here on the call. So I'm curious about how this is landing for him. There's this quality of wonder. And the needs that are alive in me are connection. So what's it about for you? And for this place of being connected to your needs, just ask yourself, how, how could I open the conversation with this other person? What could I say? What, what might come out of my mouth if I wanted to invite this conversation? So we can just think about that for a few minutes. If, but stick with feeling the feelings and the needs. And then just ask yourself this open-ended question. How might I invite the conversation? This is the kind of question that really um, invites small group work. Some of you are clear as a bell about what you might say or do. <clears throat> some of you are not quite sure yet. Maybe you need some support. Others of you are completely clueless. I wouldn't even know where to begin. So <clears throat> we've, uh, we're going to invite you to go back to your small groups again and talk about this exercise. And you get to be the guardian of your own experience in the exercise. And what I mean by that is you get to share whatever is important for you to share. And if uh, you've come in after the last time we did the breakout rooms, you might be delayed a bit. But uh, Jim is actually quickly putting you into rooms. Okay. And so um, we'll do this time, we'll do it for 20, 20 minutes, which again, will, will not feel like enough time for some of you. For others of you, it'll be too much time. <clears throat> if you run out of time, then you can figure out what else you'd like to connect about. You got, <clears throat> you got time, you got a human being with you and you get a chance to connect. What do you wanna do together? But I imagine that, that it'll, that'll give you about six or seven minutes per person. And uh, you can see how much you can get done.
in that <clears throat> seven minutes, uh, like Dory suggested in, uh, in the first exercise, <clears throat> kind of monitor the time so everybody has a chance to, um, uh, to, to, to share. And so you're going to be practicing these two other modes of nonviolent communication, which are uh, the honesty part. When you're, when you're speaking, you're, it's your chance to speak what your truth is. You might just say uh, what, how, how the exercise was from you. You might want to choose to share uh, what, you, what you learned from the exercise, or maybe you want some advice from, from the other people in your group. Whatever, whatever is for you, you get to kind of drive during about seven minutes, six and a half minutes of, of the turn. And then when you're listening, it's your chance to be listening with empathy. And what I mean by listening with empathy is that you're listening not only for the content of what the person is saying, <clears throat> but also for the feelings and the needs that are underneath the content of what they're saying. And the main thing here is if you're trying to practice NBC, the idea here is to make as many mistakes as possible <clears throat> in a safe place. So that, because it's it's the mistakes that we make that can support us in learning. So don't worry about trying to do it perfect or anything like that. Just, just go in there and be a human being, connect with each other. And we'll see you back here in about 20 minutes. Here we go. Bye. Okay. Hey. This is the moment when my curiosity reaches its peak. And I get so curious what you learned in your small group. So if someone would be willing to share, but what happened in the small groups that uh, gave you an insight or a question? Go ahead, Svetlana. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jim. Um... We have some question from our group. I have some question. Um, when we showed gratitude to other person um, on this particular exercise, we needed like to say about our needs and feelings and that's it. We're not talking about other person needs and feelings. Maybe, I mean, <laughs> um... The, the, the point of the exercise for me was to support us in trying to figure out if we want to open a dialogue with somebody, in this case, probably an easy dialogue for most people to hear a, about a gratitude they have, but still it brings up stuff because we're gonna have to make a request. If, if we're gonna, I mean, that, that was the exercise, we're gonna make a request for connection here. How do we do that? How do we prepare ourselves for that? And then how do what what might we actually say that would make it inviting for the other person to say yes? So the um I think I didn't understand correct how to do this exercise. So the purpose of this exercise was was to um to invite person for this conversation, not to make a conversation. Right. For this specific thing, I've got this this one particular gratitude I'd like to share. Mm -hmm. And uh, so and then to, to figure out how you might want to have a let me just give an example. Is, is Ron still here? Happy Ron, are you still here? Let's see here. Maybe he left. Let's see here. I don't see happy Ron here at the moment. So you you be happy Ron Svitlana, if you're willing. Okay. And <clears throat> And I'll I'll change I'll change my gratitude just a little bit so it's it's reflective of my experience with you. So um, <clears throat> let me just take a second here, get clear on my own feelings and needs. And so then, okay. So uh, Svetlana, uh, there's been something something I've been wanting to share with you. I, I think you'll enjoy hearing it. Would you take 45 seconds in order to listen to me? Um, you know, um, yes, I would like to listen to you for 35, 45 seconds, but I'm not sure that, how, how do you know if it's going to be good for me or not? Right. You want some reassurance that, uh, let me just kind of let you know, it's it's about a gratitude that I have. Does that shift anything for you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now I'm getting lots of feedback from Svetlana looking at her face and hearing the tone of her voice that, that there's a sense of openness to hearing my gratitude. 
So my, my uh, request for uh, connection seems to have landed in a, in a place that I'm, I'm enjoying. And so then I could continue the dialogue from there. So that's really what I was, what I was aiming for in the exercises, just for this very first part of opening a dialogue. Um, what might we say or do? And so part of that's an inside job, part of it's what we actually might say to the other person. So anything you, any feedback you have for me, Svetlana? Uh, yes, um, I feel uh, very, um, oh, yeah. I am still learning English, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, take your time. I, I, yeah, I feel, um, okay, I would start from different direction. My need for clarity now, Matt, thank you so much for that. And I feel sure, uh, sure about the information. It was important for me to hear that. Thank you so much. Jeff. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any questions or any insights from the exercise that we did so far? I do. Sorry, my, I don't know why I keep putting my hand up and it's not going up. <laughs> okay. I see you, Joey. Going back down. Um, okay. So I'm like, um so i'm sorry but the the um if i were to share those exact words with somebody else that i'm thinking of approaching or just some people they would land they'd be like what is she saying like that was the weirdest request i've ever heard right like um just uh, i i was just sharing with my group um I never, I don't have skill. I was never taught how to do connection requests. Right. Like they've never been modeled for me. I can conduct an NBC conversation in straight draft quite well. I, I've been doing it well lately. And I just noticed big time in two interactions with two people that love me very much and that I love that I just had the most painful, like dropping a bomb with shrapnel kind of conversations with them because there was a scary honesty conversation and I didn't make a connection request. And it was so painful for everyone. And in one of them, it was ending a partnership and I have huge regret around it and there's a big disconnect. So, and even for the, the positive ones, I'm like, it's so foreign to me. Mm -hmm. yeah very foreign to you yeah really wish for like actual dialogue that's like street draft the average person wouldn't be like think i'm a crazy person for making the re you know like what words is she these are weird words like yeah. even saying how's that land with you is like you're 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 actually bringing up a very important point and the point that i was hoping that that someone would help me to make today that if you learn some sort of a canned phrase in an NVC training, and then you start using it uh, with other people, um, sometimes it might work. And other times it'll have the effect that you, you might've noticed that it, it can kind of uh, drive a wedge rather than supporting connection. It actually seems to get in the way of connection. And so that's why we usually invite people to to do the street draft that you're talking about, to find out how can you say it in your own words so that it doesn't have this, <clears throat> this, fo this formulaic or formal way of speaking, which is likely to set off alarm bells for people. You know, um, when George- That was our experience too. Yeah, and it still can be. Because, see, yeah. we're, we're sort of stuck in the, in the paradigm of being NBC trainers, so we can get away with stuff like that except when we're with our relatives or people who don't really like NBC. And then we get reminded that there's a real world out there. And so how can we convey with our consciousness right. that our intent to connect, our openness to outcome and our presence without ever using any of those words and, and including the word, the word need. So how can, we, so that's really what the exercise is, is struggle. We haven't had any training in this. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're practicing it for exactly the reason that you say. Mm -hmm. And there's no right answer other than uh, you keep trying. <clears throat> you, you won't be able to do it perfectly. Go ahead. I've even tried using the words of, of 
hey, can I share something with you? Yeah. And it, it sometimes it's like, sure. And other, if the, it, depending on what, what energy they have. And other times it's like, no. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we want to connect with people and they let us know where they're at. It means more about where they're at than what we're saying in that moment, unless we're being robotic in the way we're speaking, which is common in our early days of NBC. And That's so exactly what my daughter said when I was practicing NBC in the early days. She was like, where'd you put my mom? I don't like sure. this robot. It's yes. not authentic. What did you do with her? You went to one of those parenting things again. Mm -hmm. And I said, honey, please, please, please hear my heart. I don't want to be that scary person anymore that's disconnecting and yelling and doesn't I like saying hurtful things. And I really please remember when you were learning a new language and that was really hard. I'm learning a new language and it's taken it took a good five to seven years and getting out of teenagehood for her to be like, hey, mom, I want to learn more of that stuff. Thank you so much. I can't wait to learn more. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like. Yeah patience really pays off and that you you kept refining your own intention to connect and that you you found a way finally to connect and it take five to seven years in your case yeah the the request part is still a challenge like i say can i make a request and i hear no yeah. <laughs> it's all the time because yeah. i haven't worked that one out yet yeah well that's what but, we're going to work out for the next few weeks so it's perfect perfect, perfect. great thank you and you're not alone in this. We came home from our training with Marshall and what we heard was, who stole my parents and left you here? <laughs> so it's not unfamiliar. I just want you to know that when we're first learning something, we're pretty much up in our head trying to do it right. And then it lands with the other people as we're trying and doing something rather than connecting. And then as we go along, it, we integrate it in a way that is in harmony with the language mm. of um, the people around us. And, and sometimes there's, there's external factors. I see your hand harmony. So let me just explain um, some of the things that can get the, in the way of this request to have uh, some involvement with somebody. And I, I learned this, um, this um, acronym just the other day reading something. Uh, and so they, th this is a cool way to remember some things that, that I can check before I enter into one of these dialogues uh, to see if I'm really in a good place to do it. And you'll notice the word that's there is halt. It's an invitation to pause yeah. before we make this invitation. So the H stands for hungry. You know, you know what it's like to try to have a dialogue with somebody when you're out of resources. So uh, hunger, um, this I think they're pointing out hunger for food, which is very present. But there could be other other hungers that are alive in us that we might need to attend to with self care before we're ready for a dialogue, especially if it's more about uh, despair or something that's not working in our life, some needs that are unmet. Uh, a stands for angry. So I don't want to open up a, a dialogue if I'm angry. It's not going to go well. Uh, the, the certified trainer, uh, Kelly Bryson, one, once said that if I open my mouth when I'm angry, I'm almost guaranteed not to get my needs met. Mm -hmm. And that has certainly been my, case, my, my experience. L stands for lonely. So if if and I think the reason that this can get in the way of an invitation uh, is that uh, loneliness can, it's such a painful feeling. There's a kind of a graspiness that can come out. So if we're coming from, we haven't taken care of our own need for connection. And now we're, we're basically requiring the other person to meet that need for connection, whether we want to or not, then, uh, then, then that can actually um, get in the way of the quality of connection that makes life more wonderful. And then the final one to be aware of tired. is tired. And so again, all of these are pointing out that if we're starting a dialogue 
in a in a a, um, a a place of where our needs are not being met, it's almost guaranteed mm-hmm. not to go well. So the the suggestion is self care first. Put the oxygen mask on your own face before trying to connect with other people. And I love that that acronym halt. So you don't even have to remember all those things. You can just notice in yourself when there's some uncertainty and halt. Yeah, I tried to figure out who to give credit to for this. It wasn't an NBC trainer, but I put it on the internet and lots of people take credit for this. And so I, I can't mm-hmm. say who, but it comes out of the recovery movement, mm-hmm. addiction recovery movement. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I think it's really good advice to halt before we open up and, and invite. Mm-hmm. So anybody else have anything you want to say about uh, the in, what you learned when you were getting ready to make your invitation? Yeah, Ron. I was amazed that, um, you know, the exercise was to look at my own needs that have been met. But I was amazed at how important it is to consider the needs of the other person. And I did discover that it was really uncomfortable for someone to receive gratitude. Mm-hmm. So what's my need? Why do I have to get gratitude across to him or her? Mm-hmm. And, or at least be have empathy about, about that. So for example, my practice would be with our wonderful driver, Jero in Bali, who took care of us for three days. I would go like, Jero, I, man, I am so happy that you take it such good care of us for three days. Can I tell you why? Now, right there, I think is the is the invitation and I need to be I need to be willing to to, he may not say no but he may really shift it so that he's not going to listen because he doesn't want to oh yeah Ron it's been great to be with you too can I get your suitcase now and we'll be going rather than being engaged and the one lady who shared in our group of the total discomfort of the person to receive any expression of gratitude i'm thinking well the gratitude actually is mine now tell if it's truly true and real the gratitude is mine now what's my need that they get it mm-hmm. right nice. and, it, and it turned out you know it's like an awareness of how important that it, it really is an invitation then as opposed to you just assumption oh i'm and and i got it that what's in the difficult about this is some people are hard of receiving because it's so uncomfortable to hear anything that that has a you in it <laughs> and even positives of gratitude have a you in it oh yeah Gerald, you've been so helpful you've been made suggestions for where to go and gone out of your way you've always you've always been been early and you've actually taken us like family you're even willing to take us up to your village on the mountain of, of your family. And so maybe he doesn't want to want to hear any of that. Yeah. 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 That's why it's so powerful to make the invitation first and then to empathize with what uh, I, I really like what you said, Ron, that you can actually do your empathy before you even give your gratitude. You can sense into the culture. Some cultures, gratitude actually can stimulate the opposite effect of what we're hoping to give. We want to, we want to, you know, I'm guessing that we, when you want to give the driver your gratitude, it's you want to share your joy. And the hope is that it will empower him and or her and, and lift them and that they'll get to see that they made a difference in your life. And so the, the, the intention and, and the needs are beautiful. And yet from the driver's point of view, it might, it might, suddenly go into all kinds of rank and privilege issues about what what life is like in Balinese society and and the kind of the the remnants of a caste system that's 5,000 years old that came from India and and now you're a trusted guest uh, in our in our country and now you're trying to tell me who I, I mean it can bring up all kinds of cultural stuff to be aware of and we won't know that unless we connect. So I really appreciate you uh, bringing attention to the more systemic uh, view of of these of these yeah. techniques that you use. Yeah, like when I do my gratitude prayer in the evening, it's totally my experience mm-hmm. of completely feeling and expressing that gratitude 
that wholly took place within me and therefore it's complete once i i acknowledge and, and voice it right right so you've got clarity of the insight if what i'm taking away you've got clarity that this is your need and that there's eight billion people on the planet um plus the spirit itself that you can use to uh, express this gratitude. It doesn't have to be the driver yeah. unless you sense that maybe it would really be a gift to him. And then maybe you still do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah thanks, Ron. I appreciate you speaking up about that. And I love hearing that you were in Bali. We're doing a training there soon. Yeah, you were over there three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Good go. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have anything you'd like to share about uh, the invitation? So this is a, a, ba a basic skill for how to enter into any kind of an important dialogue that you want to have. <clears throat> and the, the metaphor that we often use when we're teaching this, this part is imagine if, uh, if you were having a party and you wanted to invite some of your best friends to the to the party and the party's all about celebrating something and you walked up to your friend and you said to your friend hey um <clears throat> i'm having a party this coming saturday night i know you're probably too busy and you probably don't care very much about me anyway as a friend uh, i don't think you even invited me to your last party but nevertheless i would like to invite you to your party would you like I'm to come to my party. Um, i'd like to invite you to my party would you like to come it's probably not going to be an invitation that's that really goes anywhere and yet we do this all the time with our important dialogues yeah. we just start talking Mm -hmm. as if the other person is ready to listen to us. And so how about we halt, first check our own the state of our own resources before we enter into these dialogues, make sure that we're well-fed, well-rested, and our needs have been attended to, and then empathically connect. We don't need any words, as we've mentioned in the last few weeks, you don't need any words to empathically connect. So let's just say there's something on my mind, something, maybe some celebration, and I want to share it with Jory. And so I'm, I'm not tired. I've got, I'm not angry with Jory or anybody else. I'm not feeling lonely and I'm certainly not hungry. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go in, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready to go. I walk in and I just start talking about whatever is on my mind that I want to share about. Um, but I, I forgot to notice that Jory looked like this. <laughs> They you know, can't see you typing. I'm busy. You know, my my attention is elsewhere. And so, what so saying. what I get back, rather than than the engagement that I'm hoping for, is either um, uh, no feedback, or maybe even not that Jory would ever do this, but she might say, "Bug off! I'm trying to get something done. Can't you see what I'm doing here?" You think I can't? I don't say that. Well, okay. I was trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> But if I, if I just slow down just enough to take a breath and notice that she had her head down and she was typing, then I would have waited. Maybe I come back in five minutes. Or maybe I go tell my daughter instead of my, my sweetheart the celebration. So there's other choices mm -hmm. that come from empathy as well. So let's look at some of the... the um, the, the the gifts that we can give to ourselves to make our invitations more likely um, to land in the way that we want. First, the first element that I could think of is to be clear on what we want to talk about. The clearer we are about the observation uh, that we want to have as the focus of our discussion, the better off we'll be. If I go in and I say to Jury, hey, I want to talk about um, our financial situation over the last 40 years, well, that's a really big uh, evaluative kind of topic. But if I want to say to Jury, uh, we need to brainstorm about uh, what we're going to do about um, coming up with um, a new accountant since our old accountant left the island. Well, now I'm clear on my observation. I have a topic that we can talk about. And now I can also take some time to get clear in my feelings and needs. I'm freaking out. I, I know we, we need help uh, getting our taxes done. Our tax laws are so crazy here. I can't understand them. I need professional help. So I'm scared. 
and so my need is for support. And I want to include you, my partner, in this discussion. So that's another need. So now I'm really clear on what my observations, feelings, and needs are before I even open my mouth. And this might come because I've done some journaling about it. Maybe I got some empathy from a friend. Maybe I got some clarity on a, taking a bath or a walk or something like that. So I got clear on my, on my feelings and needs. The second element of inviting is warmth. So if you remember back to my party invitation, it was the opposite of warmth. It was cool. It was, it was um, actually kind of cold. It was like, it was, I was sending messages that you don't like me, you don't like me, you don't like me. So that's the opposite of warmth. So what can I do in myself to generate warmth? Because people don't go towards, on a cold day, they don't go to, towards a fireplace that doesn't have any wood in it. They go towards the source of warmth. So what can I be, what can I do to be that source of warmth? And then the third element is openness to outcome. And that's what we're going to work on uh, next week. Is um, and, and I think this is what gets in the way of a lot of our inviting, is we think we're open to outcome, but we're really not. Because we haven't taken the time to really get clear on our feelings and needs. We are attached to a strategy. We already think we know what action we want the other person to do. So we have, we have forgotten about curiosity and wonder. We go in with a preordained plan of what shall be. And then we, we go and start advocating for it. And, and that lack of openness on my part is almost guaranteed to stimulate resistance in the other person. They're going to sense that unexpressed openness, unexpressed lack of openness, I'm sorry, as aggression. So I can, I can get around that with ease if I'm just honest with myself by getting clear, clear first, getting enough empathy or self-empathy so that I show up with warmth and it's perfectly okay for the other person to say no. That's how I know is I rehearse it in my head. You know, I, let, let's say I want to talk to Drew about going out to dinner and um, and I rehearse it in my head. Okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to say, I'm going to do this. And then Jury's going to say, no, I don't want to go. How am I going to handle that? Okay, so then that gives me another layer of inner work that I can do to prepare for her no. And that's what we'll focus on more next week. I'm going to pause here and see if there's any questions or comments on what I've just said. Yeah, Fernie. Hi, um, I'm more, I have a question more on the halt part. Okay. Um, so I understand how to take care of myself in three out of four. The one that I want more clarity is lonely. How do you, how do you self care for that one without, because I mean, if you want connection, yeah, it's, can you please say more about loneliness? Yeah. Yeah, yeah lo loneliness, loneliness is more dangerous than smoking. That's not a belief. It's actually a scientific fact. You're much more likely to have chronic disease if you're lonely than if you smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> um, the, the, there's lots of strategies for um, working with loneliness. Mm -hmm. But what's the need? What's the need for you, Fernie? When you feel lonely, what are you needing? I feel like I'm being put on the spot and I just, I can't, I froze. Yeah. Right now. Let me make okay, a guess. Yeah. Let me make a guess. Okay. When, you feel, okay. when you feel lonely, are you needing connection or fun? Connection. Yeah. yeah. Accompaniment. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, so the first step for me in any kind of, of uh, what do I do if situation is to get connected with the needs. Okay, so now I know. 
I'm looking for connection. Okay. In the entire universe of possibilities, now that I know what I need, what might meet my need for connection? And I open myself to the possibility of discovering something that might meet my need for connection. And so um, my brain uh, starts coming up with all kinds of ideas. I could join an NBC group online and maybe meet some people. I could uh, join a book club. I could volunteer at the local, whatever it is, and, and offer my services. I could go check on my neighbor and see if they need me to go grocery shopping with them. You know, or if they want to take a walk. Yeah. So you start coming, you, it, once you get connected to the needs and you, the, the human brain is, it, it's a, it acts as if it was designed to predict how to get needs met. That's what it's doing all the time. Your brain is constantly predicting how to get its needs met. And so then what we do when we get connected to our need is we're priming our brain for the need that we would like it to be focusing on. Is this making any sense to you, Fernie? Yeah, I'm just more thinking about in the moment because um, the exercise was, you know, we want to like a, the make an invitation. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you said to pause and to take care of your needs first. And so I, I see how the three hungry and all that, I can see how you can quickly take care of yourself. But what about the lonely part? Mm -hmm. That's just, I guess, my question. Yeah. Yeah. To get be able to, first of all, recognize that you feel lonely. Just even just to name it. And right. What's one thing you could do? to support yourself when you lo when you're lonely just ask yourself the question and just see where that takes you you know and, and we're hardwired to try and meet our own needs if we take the time to actually ask ourselves as opposed to go into what i call the rabbit hole sometimes where we get lost and we're disconnected from life. So that question, what can I do to address fill in the blank? In this case, it's loneliness. How does that land for you? That's that's resonate with me. Thank uh -huh. you. I, I love that suggestion. And it's a kind of thing that empathy buddies are are good for too. You, you, let's say you, you get an empathy buddy or a practice buddy or something like that. And this is something that you notice is um, um, a challenge. Doesn't have to be um, connection as need, but in some particular need is a challenge for you. <clears throat> and so you bring it up as a topic with your empathy buddy and you get some empathy about it first. Mm -hmm. And then from that more of a grounded sense of connecting to your needs, you, then you might be ready for some advice. So you say, if you got, can you give me, can we brainstorm 10 ideas on how I can meet my need for contribution or five ideas on, on how I can um, address, loneliness. address loneliness or whatever it is that, that you want to work on. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's, that's yeah, that's really good. Thank you. Thanks for bringing it forward, because you're probably not the only one in the room that has that going on either. And I see someone else's hand is up too, Jim. Yeah, Jordan. still? You're still muted? This is a comment about an invitation. Um, one, th one thing I've learned about especially having a roommate is the very first thing I've learned to do is just to say, Sharon, that's the name of my roommate. Mm -hmm. And immediately I'll know whether she's available or not. Like she's either able to talk to me at that moment or she'll say, just a minute, I'm finishing this. Mm -hmm. And so I find that to be a really easy, I hope it's not too official type of I, I don't know if it's too official, but just saying somebody's name yeah. can really help. Can <laughs> yeah, really help. The bottom line is you're doing something. You see how she reacts. You know whether that works or not. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't 
not the same thing doesn't necessarily work for everybody, but you found one that works for you and her. And that's part of the human condition condition. I was going to say game. Yeah. You know? It's also a possibility of a, of a, of a topic, you know, at dinner sometime, you can say, you know, I noticed that, um, uh, um, that when we're, uh, when I want your attention, I call your name. I just want to find out how that is for you. Is it working for you? Or is there another strategy that you would like? Yeah. And you can even out. do that before you do it again, just say, this is an idea of how I can do this. Does that work for you? Well, I can safely say that it works very, very well. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to ask because it's the only thing that does work. <laughs> <laughs> believe me, it does. Uh, believe me, either everything is confused all the time or I say her name and she, I get her attention. It's as simple as that. Right and on. so, yeah, I, I, I feel it's like an it's a, a attention yes that that that's that is the shortest um um street giraffe invitation i've ever heard <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you and, and then mary yeah. oh, this mary Hi, i have a question here uh -huh. um if you might a conversation with someone to address an important issue, but you know, you know the other, the other part reaction will be um, angry or violent communication. Mm. What do you do? Well, first thing I would, if I know the other person's going to be violent. I wonder why I would want to be talking to them. I would want to be protecting myself. But it's an important thing, like in the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess then maybe it depends on what you mean by violent. Physically violent yeah. or verbally violent? Angry, yelling. Okay. Okay. So verbally violent, not not being and, hit. Or, yeah, so that's actually what we will definitely work on a little bit next week. But um, <clears throat> I don't know that this is great NBC advice, uh, but it certainly worked for me. Is um, I I look for uh, these elements of halt in the other person. Mm -hmm. So if I want to have an important conversation with Jory. And I want to <clears throat> pretty much make sure things are not going to go well. I'll make sure first that I interrupt her while she's already doing something else. So I'll destroy her focus. I'll, but and it'll be right before while she's making a meal. So I know she's hungry. And it'll be after I haven't seen her for several hours. So she's likely feeling lonely. And she's just woken up in the morning. So she's still feeling tired. Yeah, if you want to kill a relationship, those are the times you bring it up. Right. The other thing is that the other worst time is right before bed. How many important conversations do couple, especially parents that have little kids, you know, they finally get some peace so they can have these important conversations at 10, 15 at night or 11, 15 or 12, 15. And finally, they get to talk about, you know, whatever it is that's on their mind, but the other person's tired and you're lonely and so forth and so those conversations are almost guaranteed to go off the rails really really quickly this is why requesting the skill of requesting is so important and when we talk about requesting we're not just talking about trying to ask someone so we can get what we want it it's actually checking in is this a good time to talk do you have a couple minutes yeah so we invite with an openness to outcome that makes all the difference in the world. <clears throat> and in your case, Mary, it, it may be uh, there, that there might be kind of a chronic problem. <clears throat> chronic means, you know, something that's been going on for a long time. <clears throat> this happens a lot with parents and teenagers, for example, <clears throat> you know, like, like I think it was maybe um, Julie, I can't remember who somebody on this call talked about how, um, uh, you know, it took five to seven years 
before they finally had a sense that their kid was really ready to listen to anything about NBC. And that's because it probably took five to seven years or 15 years to kind of do all of our old habits before that. So the other person's feeling scared of us. You know, they, they're not in the, they're not, they haven't yet gotten the evidence that we have changed. So they think we're still the old, the old version of ourselves. So it might take time to, time to, um, to convey our, our new found um, desire to connect in a life affirming way. It may not be trustworthy at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just want to acknowledge that asking can be a challenge sometimes and to actually just say, is this a good time? Instead of, you know, or something really short with some clarity that there's openness. Are you open now? Yeah, you know, things like that. So that we don't walk into difficult situations that we're not aware of. And by the way, one, 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 one warning. The, when we offer you these suggestions, they're suggestions for you not for the other person in your relationship. Yeah, that's not what it's about. I, I, I know, but I'm, I'm just saying that that if I, when I hear advice like this coming from a trainer, then sometimes I internalize it. And I think that everybody should fill in the blank with whatever the trainer just said. And then, so then I'll start watching Jory and I'll see if she's inviting me in a warm, open <laughs> way. And if she doesn't, then I say, hey man, you're not practicing NBC. And that's the opposite. It's, NBC is not about working on other people. It's always about working on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. Thank you. And hopefully it'll get a little clearer next week. Keep keep asking until you get the answer uh, as uh, that that really works for you. And it's important if there's a challenge there that you get an empathy buddy and be able to have as much resource as you can when you have difficult situations. So we're rounding the corner here on the last few minutes of our class. So I put into the chat a link. If you're here for the first time and you want to be on our email list, then you can follow that link and join our email list. For We send out something out usually once a week, sometimes uh, twice a week. This week will be twice because we have another class coming up this Saturday on NBC Academy. And um, so that's how you can, can stay connected to our, uh, our offerings. As I mentioned at the beginning of the call, we do record the classes so that you can uh, review them later or share them in your own practice group or um, whatever you think might be a good way to use them. They're, they're free for you to, to use and uh, hopefully they inspire you to do your own classes someday. You wanna make my invitation? Yes. Yes. And so the thing that I'm liking most as I'm getting older is hanging out with people on a one-to-one -one basis or, you know, in a smaller group. And to that end, we'll put my contact information in there, joryyoucanbook.me. And if there's something coming up and you would like to have some accompaniment, I'm happy to work with you or just accompany you as needed. We, thank you, Jory. We also uh, have a feedback form. Um, and if you would like to give us feedback about our class day, it's just like four questions, I think, and an opportunity for you to make requests about what we might do in the future. You can use that little Google form. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, uh, donations. We, we're, right now we're, we're uh, collecting money for uh, an, an NBC school project in Kenya. We've raised about $1000 so far. And uh that's a good start, but I think we can I think we can do more. So everything that you guys donate for today's class, like let's say that you're moved to donate $25 at the end of today's class, you can go to that PayPal account and you can uh, PayPal us the money. And if you gave us $25, then we would chip in another $25 and the school in Kenya would get 50 bucks. Uh, for your $25 gift. So yeah, many of you saw 
the guy who came here and talked about that. So yeah, we've had a few guests recently. Oh, oh that we've was had three guests, yeah, yeah okay. um, from this project. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be another opportunity to connect with Kirsten um, early next month. I'll let you know about that. So we're trying to get this school built in Kenya. That's an NBC school. And I think that's all the little links for today. So next week, we'll continue our, our uh, exploration of requesting and uh, opening a dialogue, and especially when we hear no, or we sense no, maybe it comes indirectly. So we'll play with that next week of what you can do when somebody says no to our invitation. And Jim, would you look at that link you put in there? It has some strange things on that's it, correct. like it, really, with the country and the yeah. local, yeah. okay. Okay, and so, um, uh, we we're going to hang out for just a few extra minutes here and get these last two cu couple of we questions. Yeah. Yep. So go ahead, Fernie. Uh, 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 Jim. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Would you please send a link if I want to buy the book of the first way to liberation? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you. You should be able to get the, the book. Uh, I did buy a book. I mean, I didn't buy a book. I wrote a book um, a couple years ago called Pathways to Nonviolent Communication. And uh, you can get it at any bookstore, but okay. uh, I'm going to put into the link uh, uh, a bookstore where you can probably get the get it shipped to you for free. Right. My Thank you. .com. Yeah, you can walk into your bookstore and tell them what you want. Most bookstores will go ahead and order it for you too, if yeah. you like. And go ahead and order ten, and then give them away to people that you don't like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you can have some people you like. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's your call. <laughs> and uh, Fernie? <laughs> Are you there, Fernie? Your hands up, Fernie. Yeah. Oops. Mute, oh. You're muted. And there you go. You're yeah. unmuted. Okay. I think my connection is not so good right now. I'm sorry. Um, so I've been signing up for your email list, and I've never got it. Like, I signed up three times. Huh. I even sent you an email about it. Um, can you please add me somehow? I'm not sure, sure. I will. Yeah. Can you just put it into the chat right now? Is that if that works for you? And I'll check my emails too. If because you can put yeah, it I'll send to everybody or just to us if you're uncomfortable with that. And you can also just check your spam folder. Since we use um, Constant Contact, some some email programs when they get something from Constant Contact. Um, uh, it goes directly into your spam folder. You so you have to accept things from. Um, I think this comes from radicalcompassion at gmail dot com. Might come from me, NBC Trainer at gmail dot com. So that's really. Uh, yeah, I did check my spam and. Okay. <laughs> yeah, put, it, put it into the chat again. And I'll check it right after the call here, Fernie. Yeah, and Ken. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sure. And Kanchan, you said, is there a project in India going on right now? If so. I may have the details. And Jim put in a link about that somewhere. That's in Kenya. Oh, that, that's in Kenya. Yeah. Oh, that's in, in, in India, we got all kinds of things going on. We got about uh, eight certified trainers there. And uh, including, uh, there's usually a few on this call here or people that want to become uh, trainers. Like Purva, for example, is here today. And uh, <laughs> she can let you know some of what's going on in India. And Curva, do you want to put your contact information into the chat, please? Yeah, yeah thank you so much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay, now I've got Fernie's. And anybody else who's having trouble with your email, getting our emails, um, you can put it into the chat like Fernie did. And I will check it right after the call. And finish up with Lucinda. Thank you. I, for different reasons, do not have a PayPal account. Is there a different way to yes. make a gift? Yes, you can. You can uh, send money uh, to uh, to our um, our physical address, which I'll put into the chat. Fifty three Way, Haiku, Hawaii, nine six seven zero eight. And it's in the chat now. There you go. And Purva put her link there as well. You can also donate money directly to the Center for Nonviolent Communication for this project. Um, with, let's see here, where is that link? I think it's lower. Uh, 
Okay. There it is. Yeah, uh, CNBC is the organization that Marshall Rosenberg started uh, to further his work. And uh, they, you can just let them know that you would like to donate to the NBC school in Kenya. Or donate to them if that lights you up too. Yep. All right. Uh, I see at least one email address to add if anybody else. Uh, go ahead, Roshan, put your, uh, I, I got it there now. Great. I will, I got some homework to do right after the call ends here. So I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And we will see you all next week to talk about how to, how to enjoy hearing no. And now we have also the after parties for anybody who would like to stay and be in a group. So, so if you want to stick around, um, uh, we'll put you into small groups. I'm just going to um, recreate them right now, make a couple, just three groups and see who what happens. Thank you. All right. Aloha. See you next week. Aloha. Bye. 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 Aloha. Oh, really? You don't have to sign in while we do it?